Hi there, I'm Kevin and I'll be showing you how to make a toy. This is my very own invention, the Mecha Top. It's a rock paper scissors spin top and I'll show you how it works later on. I wanted to make this video to show what goes into actually making a toy. There's a lot of processes involved but I'll try to explain them as simply as possible. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. My concept for this toy was to have a little pilot riding on a spin top. I like robots and I wanted it to look like a drill so I had the idea of making it into a mining machine or exosuit. So in order to work out the dimensions and kinetics I had to make a prototype. This is just a rough sculpt to help me get an idea of what the final piece will look like. During the testing phase I ran into some issues but I'm sure they're going to work themselves out. Since the prototype was a complete success I started work on the actual sculpt. The material I'm using is a wax slash clay composite called CX5. The great thing about this material is that when it's cool, it is hard like plastic, but when heated, it can be worked very easily. Using this torch, I can vary the temperature and do additive and subtractive sculpting to work the contours of the pieces. Also, since the spinning top needs to be symmetrically round, I'm using a makeshift lathe to turn it as I sculpt it. This lets me create perfectly round pieces, much like a pottery wheel. Once I'm happy with the rough piece, I can take it off my lathe and begin the next stage of sculpting. Another tool I use is this electric waxer. This gives me much more precise temperature control since it's electronically heated, unlike a torch which uses gas. It has a spatula type head which I use to quickly texture the piece and give it a rocky effect. Almost every part of my figure is made this way. I create the rough form on the lathe and then I go into the more precise, detailed sculpting stage. Another neat trick you can do with this sculpting material is that if you heat it up enough, it becomes a liquid and then you can pour it into molds for all kinds of shapes. Here I'm using this clear plastic rod. After the clay has cooled and hardened, I can machine it on my lathe. These are going to be little earpieces for the pilot's helmet. The body of the top needs the most sculpting as I have to make three symmetrical sides but with three different hand gestures. After using the electric waxer to create the rut forms, I polish them up with wire tools. In order to carve straight lines, I can poke a few dots and then slowly connect them. That way I don't have to carve it in one go. This helps keep me from wavering off the line. Since this is supposed to be a robot, I wanted to put bolts along these panel lines. Notice that I'm gently digging the tip of my tool into the surface of the sculpt and not just letting the clay drip onto it. This helps weld the clay in place so it can't just fall off. Each piece was embedded with a plastic rod so that I could chuck them in my lathe. After I'm done sculpting all of them, it's time to cut those pieces off. The next step is to prepare them for mold making. This is a part of the process that not many people get to see. I mix a batch of silicone rubber and pour it around the master sculpts. The rubber hardens and after I take the pieces out of them, I am left with molds for my toy. I then pour resin into them which hardens and out come the plastic parts. I didn't film this process, but maybe I will for a future video. And finally, here are the casted resin parts. I went for a construction yellow color and the handle and drill have real metal powder added to them. I then started painting the pieces to look more weathered and realistic. I experimented with a lot of different colors and it took some time to figure out what worked and what didn't. Getting the right pink finish is one of the most time-consuming parts of making a toy. What I learned was that less is more with this kind of effect. And the moment we've all been waiting for, here is the final production piece. This is a mining robot that's piloted by a little character so I wanted it to look fun yet also dark and gritty. Finally getting to see it in its completed form is what this whole process is all about. I mean just look at that. Every little sculpted detail, every speck of paint. This is exactly what I wanted to achieve when I first imagined it. Now, some of you have probably been wondering, what is a rock, paper, scissors spin top anyway? 
Well, you spin the top, and once it stops, whichever hand is raised is the top's move. You can play against the top, or if you have two, a friend can play against you. Here the outcome is paper versus paper, so that's a tie. And scissors against rock, so rock wins. The best part about these guys is that you can't really predict which one they're going to land on, so it's really up to chance. And here is an orange mecha top I made for fun next to its predecessors. The blue one is Big Top, my very first iteration. Next to it is Robo Top, a more streamlined and pocket sized one so you can take it on the go. None of these would have been possible without my awesome mentor Peter Cato. He took me on as an apprentice and taught me how to sculpt and make toys. He also trained another wonderful artist, Solgi. I'll link both of their websites here so definitely go check them out. Bringing an idea from pure imagination into the real world is an amazing journey and I'm really glad I could share the process with you. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to show you more creations in the future. Until next time!